we're going to examine some gas laws. Gas laws um, say what happens, they don't explain why. Kinetic mo molecular theory does the explaining. This is just saying, well, if you do this, this is going to happen. So a guy named Boyle studied the relationship between pressure and volume for gases. And what he found was that the pressure of a gas sample depends in part on its volume. If you change the volume, you change the pressure. So if you hold the temperature of the gas constant and you keep the amount constant, the pressure will de increase if you decrease the volume, and it will decrease if you increase the volume. A lot of these gas laws make a little more sense if you think about a balloon. So if you, if you have a balloon and you make it smaller, maybe by squeezing the end and squeezing all the air into the end. What does that do to the pressure in the balloon? It increases the pressure, right? And if you expand the balloon, then the pressure goes down. And that's what happens with gases. When you think about a bicycle pump. So a bike pump has a cylinder with a piston. And on, down here on the bottom, it has a one-way valve that allows air in but not out. And then the hose that you attach to your bike um, allows air to go out. So when you lift up on the handle of the bike pump, you raise the piston, and you're making the volume inside that cylinder larger. That decreases the pressure of the gas inside the pump. This valve will allow air to come in. The pressure outside is larger, and so the outside pressure pushes air into the bike pump. When you push down on the handle, you're making the gas smaller. The volume is much smaller. That increases the pressure. The gas can't get out this valve, because that's a one-way valve, but it can get out the other one-way valve and go out and go into the tire of your bicycle. And that's how you can compress air and increase the pressure and get it into your bike tire. Any questions? So Robert Boyle, as I mentioned, studied the relationship between volume and pressure. And he found that the volume of a gas and its pressure are inversely proportional. And that's called Boyle's Law. Um, we can state it like this, where this little alpha symbol means proportional to. The volume is proportional to 1 over the pressure. That means if the pressure goes up, the volume goes down. If the volume goes up, the pressure goes down. It's opposite, inverse. We can also write it this way. The pressure at one set of conditions times the volume at that set of conditions is equal to the pressure at a second set of conditions times the volume at a second set of conditions. Or P1V1 equals P2V2. And this is the form that we're going to use to solve problems. So let's look at the types of experiments that Boyle did. See when he lived? He lived in the 1600s. These gas laws were figured out a long time ago. And these guys were doing chemistry under very primitive circumstances. They didn't have electricity. They didn't know what an atom was. But they were still figuring stuff out. So it's just really amazing when you think about it. So this is what's called a J-tube, because it's shaped like the letter J. It's closed at one end, open at the other. And if you put mercury in here, um, it will trap a gas in here. And you can look at the difference in the pressure. They didn't have any fancy gauges or anything. They had rulers. Um, you can, change, you can um, look at the difference in pressure between the outside, the atmospheric pressure, and the inside here with a ruler by measuring the difference in height of the mercury columns. And so what he did is he'd say, OK, well, I know the volume of this. And then he'd add more mercury, which puts more pressure on the gas. And sure enough, the gas volume got smaller. And here, this difference is larger. 
And so he did lots of experiments like that. And this is the sort of data he got if he graphed volume in liters versus pressure in millimeters of mercury. The volume is large when the pressure is low. And as you increase the pressure, the volume gets smaller and smaller. So a curve like that, this is some data that I made up just to illustrate. If you graph volume versus pressure, you get a curve. Well, curves aren't so great. Scientists like lines because if you graph it like this, you get a line. This is graphing volume versus one divided by the pressure. So now as we go out here and the pressure is getting smaller, the volume is getting larger. So volume versus one over pressure gives us a beautiful straight line. And the intercept of that line is zero. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. So if you remember, um, y equals mx plus b. That's the equation for a line. So in this situation, y is the volume. Volume equals the slope, which is some constant, times x. x is 1 over p. And the intercept was 0. So the volume is proportional to 1 over the pressure. Kinetic molecular theory explains Boyle's law. If we take a volume of a gas um, and we decrease the volume but leave the same number of particles in there, they're going to collide with the walls more often and increase the temperature. So here if we take the volume from one liter to half of a liter, we cut it in half, the pressure goes from one atmosphere to two atmospheres, the pressure doubles. If we cut it in half again, the pressure would double again. If we made the volume larger, if we doubled the volume, the pressure would get cut in half. It's an inverse relationship, and it has to do with the particles colliding with the surface of the container. So we can solve problems. Um, I know some of you aren't going to like this, but this chapter is full of word problems. I don't know if you want to just groan now and get it over with. Um, but I'm going to teach you how to solve them. Okay? We can do this. So here's, here's a problem. A cylinder equipped with a movable piston has an applied pressure of 3 atmospheres and a volume of 5 liters. What is the volume of the cylinder if the pressure is decreased to 2 atmospheres? Like, yeah, what do I do to that? Well, we're going to mostly ignore the words. If you don't understand the whole setup, if movable piston means nothing to you, that's okay. We're, we're interested in the numbers that are in here. We need a few clues from the words, but mostly we're going to look at the numbers. So what we're going to do for these is we're going to set up a table because um, we're going to have, like here, I, I put Boyle's Law up here for us, P1V1 equals P2V2. That's the equation we're going to use. And what they're giving us in among all these words are three of the four variables, and we have to find the fourth one. So what we'll do first is I'm going to make a little table here. Oh, stylus, you're just being so mean to me here. Um, we're going to call row one and row two, and then I'm going to go back through the problem and find the first number. So blah, 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 3.0 atmospheres. I'm going to write that down. 3.0, write down the unit. Then I have to figure out, okay, what is that? Is that the pressure or the volume? That's the pressure. Two ways to tell. Atmosphere is a unit of pressure, not volume. It also says pressure of three atmospheres. So they're telling us that's the pressure. So I'm going to label this column P for pressure. Three atmospheres, 5.0 liters. That's my next number. These two numbers go together. It has a pressure of this and a volume of that. 
they need to be on the same row. So 5.0 liters, and they told me that was the volume. So I'm going to call that column V. You with me? Now it says, what is the volume if the pressure is decreased? There's our changing word. There's going to be something happens, compressed, expanded, heated, something changing. So our changing word is here, decreased to two atmospheres. So this is the other set of conditions. These guys were one. This two atmospheres goes in row, row two. This is a pressure, so I'm going to put it in the pressure column. 2.0 atm. At this point, you should have, when you've got all the numbers out of the problem, you should have one empty space in your table. Then go back and look at the question. What is the volume? That's what they're asking us for. Is this going to be a volume? Yeah, it is. This is what we're solving for. So I'm going to call this V because it's in the V column. 2 because it's in the second row. So that's V2. Okay? So I'm going to use this equation up here and solve for V2. So P1, V1 equals P2, V2. So this is what I'm trying to get by itself. So we, we have a little bit of algebra here. We need to rearrange the equation. It really, really is best to do it before you stick numbers in. So rearrange it and then put the numbers in. So I've got V2 here, and it's with P2. I want to get rid of the P2. I do that by dividing. So I'm going to divide this by P2. Because P2 divided by P2 is 1. So poof, it cancels out, it goes away. But if I want this to still be equal, I have to do the same thing to the other side. Right? If I've got two kids balanced on a teeter-totter and I hand one a watermelon, it's not going to be balanced anymore unless I hand the other one the same size watermelon. So if I divide one side by P2, I have to divide the other side. And there I've rearranged my equation. It's kind of messy, so I'm going to rewrite it. And I'm going to write V2 equals this business. So V2. And be careful when you're copying things down, because there's a lot of similar letters and numbers. And if you get them mixed up, it does matter. Now I've got my numbers all labeled. And all I have to do is substitute them in. So where it says P1, I'm going to write 3.0 atmospheres. So this is P1, 3.0 atmospheres. And volume 1 is 5.0 liters. And that's divided by P2, which is 2.0 atmospheres. Take a second to look at the units. Atmospheres and atmospheres cancel out. If your units don't work out, you're probably not going to come up with the right answer. So stop and, and fix all that first. So now I've got 3 times 5 divided by 2, 7.5. So 7.5. And what's the unit on that? Liters. I check my sig figs. I'm supposed to have 2. And so there I go. Then you should ask yourself, does that make sense? So we decrease the pressure. Should the volume get bigger or smaller? Bigger. Any questions? Boyle's Law has applications to scuba diving. There are some very good reasons why they make you take all those classes and get certified before you can go scuba diving. Um, 
There's a lot of ways you could kill yourself scuba diving, and not just drowning. Um, if you're scuba diving, it's important not to ascend too quickly. You know, so you've been down there and you can't come up too fast or there's going to be problems. What happens when you go down into the ocean or into a deep lake is for every 10 meters of depth that you go down, you're going to experience an extra atmosphere of pressure. So because of the water, the water is squeezing you. If you went down there with... Um, you know, and you were Barney Flintstone or Fred Flintstone, they used to use these reeds and they'd go deep down and they'd breathe through the straw, right? That's not going to work because there's so much pressure on the outside of your lungs and the air pressure is just not going to work because you won't be able to expand your lungs to breathe. So you need pressurized air. And the gas regulator on that tank, the pressure regulator, compensates for the pressure on the outside so that you can still breathe. If you're at a depth um, of 20 meters and you've got three atmospheres of pressure on the outside, then your regulator is going to adjust so that you have three atmospheres on the inside and then you're able to breathe just fine. But if you take a breath down here and then ascend very quickly without exhaling, exhaling now the pressure is less the volume of your lungs is going to triple. That's not good for you. So it's important to ascend slowly when you're scuba diving. Let's look at this. A snorkeler takes a syringe filled with 16 milliliters of air from the surface where the pressure is one atmosphere to an unknown depth. The volume of the air in the syringe at this depth is 7.5 millimeters. You know what, I think there was a mistake. I think this is supposed to be 15. Um, I'm going to just fix that right now. Let's make this 15 milliliters. So he goes down, and the, um, the volume of that air decreases to 7.5 milliliters. What's the pressure at this depth? Well, we can, we can use our equation and solve this. There's other, ways, there's other ways to solve these, um, and you're welcome to use them, but I'm not going to go over them in class because this is what works for most students. So one and two. So here up at the surface, we have a volume of 15 milliliters and a pressure of one atmosphere. So that's the volume, and the pressure is one atmosphere. And then he goes down. Um, and under the water, the, pressure, the volume is 7.5, so 7.5 milliliters. What's the question? What's the pressure at this depth? So we're trying to find the pressure, and this blank here is a pressure, so that's nice. We're going to not worry about that next sentence until the end. So we've got P1V1 equals P2V2. If you struggle with rearranging equations like this, you are in good company, but you need to get help, and I can help you. So please come and see me either in my office hours after class today or in lab, and I can help you figure this out. It'll make everything so much easier. So here we're trying to find... P2. So I'm going to divide by V2 on both sides. These cancel out. So P2 equals P1V1 over V2. And I put this in and I get uh, one atmosphere times 15 milliliters divided by 7.5 milliliters. So pressure 2 is going to equal 2 atmospheres. Makes sense, because the volume was cut in half. That means the pressure doubled. 
Pressure goes up, volume goes down, vice versa. Any questions about that? Now this last sentence. If the pressure increases by an additional one atmosphere for every 10 meters of depth, how deep is the snorkeler? Well, we just figured out the pressure at this depth is two atmospheres. How much greater is that than the one atmosphere at the surface? One atmosphere, right? And this tells us that the, it increases one atmosphere for every 10 meters. So he must be 10 meters below the surface because the pressure increased by one atmosphere. Being able to calculate P2 is very important. Being able to answer this last part, eh, not so much. So the depth must be 10 meters. So that's one answer, and here's the other. Any questions? But at the surface, there's a pressure of one atmosphere from the air. So it, it increases every 10 meters. So at 10 meters, it's two atmospheres. At 20 meters, it's three atmospheres. At four meters, it's five atmospheres.